so I uh, I know on the the meetup we we mentioned like lightning talk, so we can just have some. Call, if anyone wants to stay on and have casual conversation about tech, I know. So I see Paul Rick signed on. He, Paul Rick helps yeah. me with nice. Plantico, and uh, I, I I was talking with him earlier. I know he possibly had some questions for Sean because uh, Sean's a big Svelte guy, and we we always want to talk shop about that. But I don't want to occupy all the time. So if people want to hop off, I, you know, feel free. But if people want to stay on and talk, that's always um, great too. So I'll open up the floor to whoever wants to chat. Uh, yeah, you want really? Uh, yeah, what's up? Um, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got a couple of questions about uh, about felt Really, um, we're, we're thinking of implementing a compiler in Go to get away from the V8 runtime. Um, in essence, is it kind of declarations and import statements are a big part of like um, label statements in your declarations and keeping track of variables? Is that a big part of what you're actually parsing from the JavaScript side of things and the mustache? template as well. Like you're not necessarily looking at every bit of JavaScript. There's certain parts, there's a subset that you're interested in in terms of reactivity and knowing what's what's going to change and what's not going to change and keeping counters of those. So I presume a lot of it is just can be left as is the source and you want to extract certain elements and, and create your, like your, this is how many times this is referenced, this is a, a, a variable that is reactive because it does change later on. So is there a strict subset of JavaScript um, whether it's expression statements, or sequences, or declarations that you're interested in outside of the bigger, like the whole of JavaScript, in terms of syntax and what you're looking at. Mm, I see. Um, no, it's it's pretty much just the the reactive labels. Um, yeah. At the same time, I would caution you against re-implementing this file compiler. Um, I I want to know <laughs> why you why you want to do that in Go. Uh, why not just use this file compiler and then and, and then you know build it to an intermediate stage and then and then use the results of that. Because the problem is then you have to either use Node, which you're trying to get away from, or you have to use the V8 runtime, which calls, uh, you have to use Seago, and there's a lot of headaches in terms of using Seago uh, in Go, in terms of getting releases and like uh, cross-compiling C to work on Mac and to work on, it doesn't work at all on Windows, not th that's Jim at the minute, it, there's no Windows support. So it just, it would greatly simplify not having to use the V8 runtime and calling it to C. But Seago would mean we could eradicate all that and strictly just do everything in Go. And then we can create, like, if we're going to go to the hassle of creating a parser, a JavaScript parser, you can pre and post process your stuff using Go, using Go routines. Like, JavaScript is single threaded. So the only one thing is ever happening at one time. Whereas with Go, if you have 12 processors, you can have 12 things happening together and even more. And you can, you can schedule network tasks and you can do concurrent work. So you could, you could greatly speed up. Like you can have an, an insane build system. So that is, I suppose, the end goal is to really, if you're going to use Go, you may as well use it for what it's designed for, which is to be highly concurrent and parallel, which you can do with, with V8 runtime and C Go. So. OK. In that case, I would warn you that um, the JavaScript section is just the smallest part, actually, because you also, so Svelte is a HTML superset. It's not a JavaScript superset. Yeah. Um, so unlike React, React basically you just need to take care of uh, transpiling the JSX. Uh, yeah. So you need to transpile uh, not just the um, the JS, but also the HTML sections where there are a bunch of custom directives that you're going to have to model. Um, so yeah. To speak yeah. So basically, if you, if you had a working HTML parser, you could just extend it with the syntax. Um, to deal with just basically, in essence, you need to just add a few um, like the, the each statements and all that stuff. You need to integrate that to your HTML parser, and that's because obviously Acorn does the JS parsing, so that's completely separate from like when you're talking about a superset of HTML, you're you're strictly talking about outside of the style tags and outside of the, out of your script tags. It's just the HTML. It's the few little yeah. nu nuances that are that are strictly related to spell that you just need to integrate on top of your existing HTML parser. Uh, well, and also, uh, it's pretty popular to use some preprocessors. So uh, you might yeah. use PostCSS or less or stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's not just plain CSS. Uh, same goes for JavaScript. Sometimes people want to use TypeScript. Uh, yeah. And then sometimes people want to use Pug in their <laughs> HTML. Uh, yeah. But I think that's that's a very small minority. So yeah. you, have to pick, well, you have to pick what you support. Yeah, well, I think if we could just get the get the compiler working, and in essence, just get straight CSS working, you could always you could always add the other bits later on. I suppose if you got that working well, you'd have more people on board in the community, so you'd probably have more people to contribute. Like if you had a if, if we had we're working on Windows and working on Mac, no problem. I think you get a lot more people involved in the project, and then you could obviously have a lot more people contributing, so it'd make life a lot simpler for everybody. Uh, this is cool. Is this public yet? Hmm? Is this public? Have you shared this yet? 
no, no, it's only I, I'm just I'm, I actually just discovered Antler the other day. Um, although Jim was talking to someone and they didn't have a, <laughs> didn't have a great appreciation for Antler. Um, <laughs> the runtime is dated in terms of how it's written in Go, but um, I've had no issue no issue with it. I don't think you're going to be parsing like one gigabyte files in Svelte. I don't think we have to worry about infinite recursion because we're parsing gigantic files. So I think for our for our um, purposes, Antler is good enough. Um, it's not the fastest parser in the world, but because in Go you can do multiple things at once, you can make up for any any shortcomings in the parser. So yeah, I, I'm trying to get the parser working first. It's got like a visitor pattern where you go around and you can return nodes and you can manipulate them and I, you kind of get the original source code, column, line numbers and all that kind of stuff and you can then manipulate little pieces of it. You, I, I have a kind of working like that code read as well of Richard Harris's, Richard Harris's where you can just get a little bit of, you can just pass a little bit of syntax and say you want to you want to change the left operator and you can just like print code and it'll spit it back out. And I have it implemented just as of today that it'll spit the source code exactly back as you put it in. So it respect white space and all that kind of stuff as well. So yeah, but look, it's it's a long ways off been working, but but the idea, the proof of concept is there. It parses what I've tried very well. And specifically, if it's a kind of a more strict subset of JavaScript we have to worry about, it, it greatly simplifies because we don't have to look at certain parts. We can just leave the rest of the source as is. We just need to extract the declarations and, and the reactive statements. So I think that would probably greatly speed up what we're doing as well. We could do have a specific parser just for extracting the bits of felt that we need, the JavaScript first felt. So yeah, so I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think it's doable. Uh, famous last words, but yeah, I think it's it's doable. It's just getting an understanding of what's required to create this felt compiler. Because I've looked at the source code and there's a lot of boilerplate there. I see there's a lot of interfaces for um, TypeScript and all that kind of stuff. But there isn't, I, I think, there's probably not a massive amount of code that actually does stuff. There's a great deal of code that does a lot of uh, the, the typing, that this is what this is and this is what this is. And that, that's what I saw a lot of. Um, if you could point me to even just the central parts of the code that does the heavy lifting, like, you know, that create create fragments and that kind of stuff. But if I, if you could just point out or just tell Jim that like, this is X, Y, and Z, these are the, the heavy lifting parts of this file compiler that you need to implement, that would be a, it would be a big help. If that um, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm i more of a user than a maintainer. Uh, yeah. So I'm not the best person to ask about this. Uh, you can try yeah. Tandy Hao on, on, on Twitter. Uh, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, sh you can share your project uh, in Tags Felt Society on Twitter, and I can get you more eyeballs looking at your project. Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. Great, Sean. So, thank you. Um, did it, I don't know. I mean, I know we're, we're over the time we scheduled, so anyone who needs to hop off, but if anyone else wants to talk shop about anything, ask questions, share projects, um, I'm happy to stay on and look over things. <laughs> oh, someone just joined. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's uh, it's bedtime for me in here, so I'm gonna yeah. say goodnight. And uh, um, yeah, it's uh, I've got a uh, my first uh, antenatal or prenatal classes tomorrow, so exciting times, Ooh, nine in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's gonna be fun. So look, it was nice to meet everybody, and Ash, we'll, we'll see you all again. Yeah, thanks for Hi, staying Patrick. up late. And cheers, bye bye. Good seeing you. You too. Bye bye. Right, bye. bye. Justin, it looks like you might be yeah. saying something, but I can't hear yeah. it. Uh, sorry, the, the, the mic. Um, I have another question re regarding spells. And because uh, today in the Jamstack, we have Next, Next, we have all, uh, those tools, uh, and Gatsby building static. Uh, this is one end of the spectrum. Because with the release of uh, Spell Kit, and it seems that I've read something that uh, maybe Spell is going to become the first serverless first framework so is that is that is that because Svelte is going to be as dynamic as possible and on the other spectrum we have uh, uh, pro uh, apps that are going to be as static as possible is it who's going to win I mean the static side or the static projects or the uh, the dynamic project or the serverless first Um, I mean, I don't really, I don't like these labels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 because I don't yeah, agree, I don't agree with the question. The, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't agree with the question. Next.js is really good for uh, all three modes. Uh, and Svelte's, Svelte Kit is essentially optimizing for serverless 
uh, out of the box, but also you can do static and uh, server full. Um, yeah, so what? Just just pick the mode that you need. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, Tristan, I'm not an, I don't, I've actually never used it, but um, have you looked into Redwood JS at all? Um, it's not spelled, but it, it, yeah. if you're looking for serverless stuff, I'm pretty sure that it's like a, it's like I think full stack Jamstack is kind of like their, like, it's, it seems that Redwood is based on React, right? It, it might be. I think it's React. But I, I think if you're looking for like serverless stuff, I'm pretty sure that's what it's doing. Again, I haven't used it myself. Um, I don't know, I'm Sean or anyone else avoid, is I'm trying to avoid React. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. That makes recently, sense. <laughs> I, I, I switched from uh, React Next uh -huh. to Vue uh, maybe two months ago mm -hmm. because I saw a lot of uh, interesting features uh, from Next 3. And uh, I've also heard uh, spell a long time ago, but I never tried. And it's and when I uh, learned maybe uh, spell two weeks ago, started learning spell two weeks ago, it the syntax was very really close to view. So it seems that it's a really good match for me right now, or maybe the next few years to uh, build uh, projects on view and Svelte. I mean, depending on the context. Um, but I, one thing I was really impressed with Nuxt is that they can build, they can build a project, uh, they can, if, they can compile the project in different targets, not only on static, but they can also build a project on, uh, for workers, like, uh, workers that we can, we have right now, uh, with Cloudflare, Cloudflare, right? You can, they can, so the, the whole, uh, the whole uh, site can be generated with uh, um, uh, uh, serverless functions. So I was wondering if, uh, because, and I was uh, listening to a podcast from um, maybe the CTO of uh, Cloudflare, and they say that right now they managed to, uh, to reduce the core starts to so maybe, maybe to the milliseconds that maybe we won't see in the future that much difference between a static and a, a serverless uh, uh, functions uh, um, uh, project. Mm, I don't know about that. Um, it's, not about, it's not about the cold start, it's about data fetching. Mm -hmm. What's the latency of data fetching? Uh, I, I I haven't think about I haven't thought about that, but uh, yeah, but uh, um, yeah, the data and yeah, I haven't thought about that. Good. There's no point reducing cold starts from thirty milliseconds to nine milliseconds or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when your data fetching takes three thousand milliseconds. John, I had one last question for you, kind of regarding uh, technical community builder stuff. So, I assume you're you're thinking about this stuff with your your work with Svelte Society and and building up that community. Um, do you think uh, uh, that like Svelte has officially crossed the chasm, or where do you think that Svelte sits in in terms of that like crossing the chasm graph? Uh, still early adopter phase. Um, early adopter, okay. Uh, as long as uh, honestly, as long as React View uh, are on top. Uh, then Svelte will always be like sort of crappy number three. Uh, something essentially, React essentially has to shoot itself in the foot somehow uh, to then uh, cause some kind of disruption. Um, probably this will result uh, when the two of the core team, when some of the core team members eventually leave. Um, um, so I call it React's ship of Theseus moment. Uh, Sebastian Mark Boga is the only original core team member left. Uh, so when he and Danny Bumov leave, uh, then React will essentially be over. Um, and uh, and at some point, people will start to, you know, opt out because of Facebook and all that, um, and and want a more complete model of of um, uh, web development. Um, so yeah, still very early stages. Um, it takes a, a while to to build a community. Um, I don't necessarily think that Svelte should take over uh, like a, a number one spot, uh, basically because everyone that comes to Svelte is picks it as a second framework. So everyone has a really good. Uh, mental model, you know, they, they know the difference between what the framework does and what the platform does or what JavaScript does. Um, so I like that 
uh, people are more discerning when they come to Svelte because they've they already came from some other framework, um, and therefore they have some experience. Uh, they don't ask a lot of <laughs> you know very very confusing questions that are rep very repetitive. You know when I when I was moderating the React Reddit, uh, I would get a lot of very similar questions, and some of them would have nothing to do with React whatsoever, and they just wouldn't know. And it's not their fault. It's a very complex thing that they're learning. Um, but it's nice to be number two. Uh, uh, I know that every American thinks about the Avis commercial, like we're number two, we'll work harder. Um, and for us, like for, for Salt, you know, like we're, we're the second, we're probably a second framework that you picked, um, but you'll probably enjoy it more because it's got, uh, if you come to this, you probably have gone through a similar personal journey that everyone else here has gone through, uh, where like the existing tools weren't good enough for you and you're looking for something better. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm really excited for for the journey. I think Svelte is definitely it seems like it's taking off. Uh, so I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, the, the, a part of part of this is a game for me, right? Like uh, I I've never been a part of a community this early on and been a core part of the growth. You know, I founded Svelte Society out of like just a random whim in, in New York City, and now it's uh, we're we're holding our third conference uh, this weekend. And uh, <laughs> and there's thousands of developers, so companies are sponsoring it. Uh, Apple is like hiring for Svelte developers. Like it's it's pretty cool to watch. Yeah, I saw that. Um, That's cool. And it's it's purely because uh, for me, it's just like practice. Because right now, it doesn't matter to me. Like if 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 I fail, like whatever. Um, but like I'm practicing for when when I when I really need to to do this to know how to grow a community and um, uh, yeah, I mean it's just it's just. Fun and games until it's serious. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's cool. Um, awesome. Well, well, thanks for everyone sticking on and uh, staying on and having some great conversation. I, yeah, I had a lot of fun. Um, exactly. yeah. Do you could you post this uh, on YouTube somewhere? Yeah, I'm gonna post it on YouTube. I'll set, I'll put a link right on the um, the meetup page, and I'll we'll also tweet it out. So uh, I'll awesome. tag you in that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I try I try to track all my appearances so I can people can catch up. You know, if they're not available live and all that. Yeah. Um, but it's always, always great crashing up. And um, thanks so much. Um, and um, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Sean. Yeah. Everyone, let's see everyone in person someday. Um, yeah, I'm, I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Cool. I'm gonna. Thank you. Back. All right. See you later. Thanks. Bye. Uh, stop the recording here. <laughs>